In this video, I'm going to build a city to see if I can survive without water in city's skylines. Normally, when you build a city, people need food, water, and shelter. But what if they didn't have any water? No water means no water. But that's not all. There's more. No water also means no poop removal. In city skylines with no water and with poop everywhere, what roadblocks would stand in my way at creating the perfect utopia? So with that question in mind, I began my adventure. I started in a new game with the first city, Dry City. I began by removing the water. I set out on the first day by constructing a road off the highway and a power plant. As mayor, what plans could I lay out to give our town the best possible chance with my designs at the urban sprawl? No water meant the homes would never rise or be upgraded in their levels, and no poop removal meant it would be generally unpleasant, and people would always want to leave. How could I incentivize enough people to stay to create a sustainable city? So I decided to focus on building wide at first. I laid out my plans, residential, commercial, and industrial. I constructed my first set of pipes along with a poop dumping pipe. Sure enough, no poop emerged from the pipe because there was no poop in the town to begin with. And the people didn't even have enough water in the first place to produce any poop at all. But gradually, as people first arrived in the town, they would produce a small amount of poop to start. More on that later, but for now. As the town grew over the course of the next couple months, people grew thirstier and thirstier. Although still yet, no one produced any poop at all. So I decided that we would remain dry. Everyone would be at least somewhat dissatisfied. So the question became, how could I create a financially stable and, well, mostly happy town, albeit a very dry town, lacking altogether in moisture? It goes without saying, we were losing money. We were always losing money. Houses started going on fire because of the lack of water. I built a fire department, but they instantaneously ran out of water. I needed more money. I rose taxes to 11, then 12%. For new residents, after great expectations upon moving into the town and building up new residences, people kept getting thirsty, then abandoning their homes. Then we demolished the abandoned homes until the next families moved in and repeated the cycle of disappointment in paying us taxes. Crime was high, but even the police stopped caring because they ran out of water. The elementary school ran out of water too. The children were thirsty and dumb. We were still losing money, but I began to strategize a potential escape from our Sisyphean cycle of build-up, taxation, and abandonment. It worked for now, but this certainly couldn't in the long term. But here's where I discovered a potential loophole. Apparently, when people move into your town in the game, they bring with them some amount of bodily fluids. Conversely, when the houses were all abandoned, we produced no raw sewage. But for a fleeting moment when new families migrated to the town, there was a brief opportunity where their poop, in the form of raw sewage, emerged from the municipal poop pipe. Naturally, I seized the opportunity to trap the raw sewage in a terraformed bowl, like a pool of poop. Then I could pump the dirty water back into the pipes containing the town's drinking water source. While it was an ideal solution because everyone would have to drink the wastewater, it certainly was better than nothing. So I experimented, and sure enough, it worked perfectly. Except that it made everyone in the town very sick. A suboptimal solution, but still, this lengthened the period of time people could go before realizing that Dry City was a ticking time bomb in the area of water poisoning. So instead of cleaning the water, which would be too expensive for our budget right now, instead we built a medical clinic to treat everyone's poop water sickness. I lowered the funding enough so that there would be just barely enough demand and money to keep everyone still alive and earn more money for the town. And then with the town producing its entire water supply from literally nothing except the bodily fluids of newly emigrated residents, I began to save up money for a clean pump to treat the poop water and make it cleaner. I installed the new pump, but unfortunately it wasn't clean enough and everyone still kept getting sick. As people remained in the town for a longer period of time, at least we were moving on to more advanced civic problems. Trash was piling up, so we built the dump, piled everyone's trash all on one side of town. Everyone was still sick, so then I built a hospital to keep treating all the sick people. We also destroyed the homes of sick people so that they would move away and healthy people would move into the neighborhood instead. Finally, after about a year of covering up the problem, at last I began to realize that the water simply wasn't clean enough, and I built a more expensive and more advanced water treatment facility to make the poop water completely clean and poop-free. 
With clean water flowing through the tubes of the water treatment site, demand rose to new heights as newcomers flocked in droves to the newly christened self-watering city. Dry city was sopping with demand. People loved it when there was no poop in their drinking water. They also loved dogs, so we constructed a series of dog parks all around the town to help them ignore the fact that they were drinking their own purified wastewater and concentrate on other things to make up for it. Naturally, they became happier, but happiness wasn't enough. It was sort of like a giant Ponzi scheme. And that's because it was a giant Ponzi scheme. But I needed more water from more people's incoming bodily fluids if I wanted to keep expanding this town. And I had to keep it going if I wanted to maintain the common prosperity. So I decided to terraform another bowl out of the dried out dirt and construct another poop water treatment facility on the shoreline. This would facilitate our backup water supply just in case if things got hairy. But it all kept requiring more and more infrastructure to keep repurposing the wastewater fast enough to meet the water demands of the enlarged, ever-growing town, turgid with demand and thirsty for more. I built more power plants inside of the city near the highway and expanded the industrial, residential, and commercial zones of the city. All this as clean water pumping flickered on and off around the edges of the town. As the urban sprawl began to grow, I started to realize that this would be a near constant balancing act, the town's primary existential threat forever. Would we be able to clean the poop water fast enough to drink it? Possibly not, but we could still try. In the meantime, I focused on other areas of municipal concern. Were the cops powerful enough to render executive force against criminals? Were we educating the stupid children fast enough to build offices and end our reliance on factories that were killing us all for employment? When I felt like my people were capable of managing themselves on their own, I decided to set out and embark on my true project. The one I'd been saving up for once we were finally financially stable. Fill back up the entire ocean with our cleaned poop water. Starting out from the dry, arid wasteland we had been living in. So that's what I did. For the next few years, I began on my side project, spending all the taxpayer money on financing more and more wastewater treatment facilities and pumps to spew out everyone's poop water in the blind hope that it would eventually somehow break even. It didn't, but we created a very impressive river of decontaminated wastewater. Naturally, the town grew, and with it the size and impressiveness of our twin artificial canals. These, of course, led back to themselves as we drank our own cleaned bodily fluids. I then embarked upon a new experiment. If we had amassed such a large population by now, over 17,000 people, surely it wouldn't make a difference if only a few of them didn't get their water. After all, I had bigger dreams than just selling people their own poop water for tax purposes. So I began buying up land beyond our initial square. And then I did the unthinkable. I built another poop water facility beyond our borders and dumped it all into the wilderness. The strategy here was to gradually edge away the moisture from our population until eventually we could restore the river to its former impressiveness. So it was with one, then two, then three poop water spewing sites. I observed the effects and as the river flowed, sadly, our bodily fluids merely evaporated upon contact with the air, ultimately rendering my efforts to refill the entire landscape with our bodily fluids inane, without effect and entirely useless. Nonetheless, it was still admittedly a rather impressive spectacle, even without its own full-flowing man-made river of crap. But how had so many people arrived at this way of life? 10 years. Ultimately, that was all the time it took for our population to rise from a few meager dry troglodytes to a turgid, moist population, over 20,000 strong, sopping with demand and thirsty for more. The people were happy, healthy, safe, educated, and mostly they had water, except of course the people who lived on the periphery of the town, but just ignore them because they don't matter as much. So it was, an entire town, powered by a river of its own crap water. It seems grotesque because it is grotesque. But at the end of the day, no matter how gross, it's a feat of human engineering we'll need to survive in the coming days of the cataclysm that lies before us. With all that in mind, there was only one thing left to do. This was one of the most shameful cities I'd ever created, so I decided to launch a series of increasingly larger meteors at it to feel okay about all the events that had transpired here. And honestly, good riddance. Dry City was dry once again, and things were restored 
to the way they were supposed to be. Anyway, that's what I think would happen if you tried to design a town without any natural source of water and cities' skylines, but you had to use the bodily fluids of all the people who moved there as a drinking water source. I'm Ambiguous Amphibian. A big thanks to my patrons, whose turgid bodies are sopping with support for my videos. Until next time.